Today we're going to make a mailbox. I'm going to start with a piece of plate steel that is 3 16 of an inch thick. I drew some lines 9 inches apart and then got my angle grinder and scored about halfway through the steel on the first two lines and then cut all the way through on the third. In some previous videos I've shown how you can build a metal bending jig that makes this really easy. But I only need to do two bends, so I'm just going to do it by clamping it down to some sawhorses and 2x6s. I clamp some 2x4s to the piece that I want to bend up, and then threw some heavy bags of concrete to hold it down while I lift it. I repositioned the handles and bent the other side until it wouldn't bend anymore. The grooves were plenty deep, but they weren't wide enough, so I had to remove a little bit more material to make room for the bend. To finish the bend, I'm going to use Maker Brand T-Bar clamps. These clamps are all metal, heavy duty, and have a ton of travel, and are perfect for these types of applications. You can learn more about these clamps and other Maker Brand products by clicking on the link in the description box below. I'm not trying to bend them perfectly, I'm just trying to get them a little bit past 90 degrees. I know once that I get them there, I can adjust them to be nice and square. I had some 3 quarter inch thick oak leftovers from some other projects. Now this isn't the ideal wood to use for outdoor applications, but it was handy and it looks pretty good. I cut the bottoms and the ends using a table saw first to get it to the right width, and then my compound miter saw to cut the pieces to length. I also cut some additional strips that are about two and a half inches wide. These are just to give me a little bit more wood to screw into when I attach the metal. Okay, while the wood glue is curing, let's get started on the base. I cut an 18 inch long piece of eight inch quick tube to use as the form for the concrete. I dug a hole just about 16 inches deep that the tube would fit into. After checking to make sure the tube was level, I then infilled around it so that it wouldn't move. I then took a piece of 10 inch long, 3 quarter inch diameter galvanized pipe, attached a flange to it, and then screwed it to two boards so that it would rest flat right on top of the quick tube. I mixed up two bags of quickrete, fast setting concrete mix, and shoveled them into the form. I then inserted the galvanized pipe using the two boards to keep it from sinking too far in. All right, back to the steel work. The cut edges of the steel plate were a little bit rough, so I put a flat disc on my angle grinder and rounded them over. I then drilled holes through the steel so that I can attach the wood bottom and sides. I started with a smaller bit that was just big enough for the screw to fit through, and then I switched to a larger bit so that I could countersink the sloped heads of the screws. I cleaned up the steel with acetone and then painted it with Rust-Oleum Rusty Metal Primer. The flag for the mailbox is also going to be made out of plate steel, but this time I found a scrap piece that was just 1 8 of an inch thick. I drilled a hole at the one tight corner and then cut it all out with my angle grinder. I switched from a cutting wheel to a flap disc and rounded over all the edges. I need to make a stop that'll keep the door from swinging in too far, so I just cut a short piece of 1 inch angle steel. I used rusty metal primer on these pieces and on a three foot pipe, coupling, and floor flange that I'm going to use to support the mailbox. Once the primer was dry, I then did two finished coats of Rust-Oleum Protective Enamel. For all these pieces, I painted them white with the exception of the flag which I painted light blue. Quickrete fast setting concrete mix sets in just about 20 to 40 minutes, so I unscrewed the flange and just peeled away the cardboard quick tube. I glued and screwed the back piece of oak to the bottom piece, and I just used my Maker Brand clamps to hold everything in place while I drove the screws. I finished all the wood pieces with Maker Brand Simple Finish. I've always hated driving hinges. I tend to get them just a little bit off. Recently, I learned a really simple trick, which is just to use a little bit of painter's tape to tape them to the wood so that it doesn't wiggle 
and you can accurately pre-drill the holes before you drive in the screws. I drilled the hole through the center of the door so that I could attach a stainless steel cabinet pull that I had left over from another project. Don't want the door just flopping open and the mail falling out, so I attached a rare earth magnum that turned out to be way too strong, and you'll see how I fixed that in just a little bit. Now, normally when I'm attaching metal to metal, I would weld it, but this would be the only case where you would need a welder for this project, and I want the project to be as accessible as possible, so I just crazy glued the steel angle to the inside of the mailbox. Now, I would have never thought to try this if I hadn't participated in a recent Crazy Glue event where I saw the world's strongest man, who also plays the mountain in Game of Thrones, test his strength against the power of Crazy Glue. It was a really fun event. Thor is absolutely huge, but even he could not break the bonds of Crazy Glue. And the way they tested it was just to put a few drops between two pieces of metal that they could then attach chains or ratchet straps to. So I felt pretty comfortable attaching steel to steel for something as simple as a mailbox. So shout out to Crazy Glue for throwing an awesome event and for making a product where just a single drop can hold up to a thousand pounds. All right, back to the project. I slid the wood pieces inside the steel housing and then drove screws in through the holes that I had already drilled. I used stainless steel fasteners and hardware wherever possible with this project since it's going outside. Now the one thing with stainless steel screws that you have to be careful with is that they tend to be pretty soft so make sure that you pre-drill holes so you don't shear off the heads. Everything was going together nicely, but the magnet was grabbing onto the steel way too hard. It was very difficult to open up the mailbox. So I just cut a small piece of leather and crazy glued that over the magnet, but still the magnet was too strong. So this time I just got a piece of 1 8 of an inch thick cork, which has an adhesive backing, and I just stuck that to the steel angle that's inside the mailbox. This weakened the magnet just enough so that it's easy to open, but it's still strong enough to keep the door shut. I drilled another hole through the side and used a stainless steel bolt to attach the flag. I added additional bolts through the same side to create resting points for the flag so that it could either stay up or stay nice and horizontal in its resting position. For this bottom stop, I want the flag to be able to go around it, but then still be able to rest against it. So I just ground down the head of the bolt real flat. This way the flag can wiggle just enough to bypass it, but then it can still catch it to hold it vertical as well. I attached a three quarter inch pipe and fittings that I had spray painted white to the underside of the mailbox, and then screwed the whole thing onto the foundation. Everything was working as it was supposed to, but I was worried that the bolts might scratch the paint on the backside of the flag. So I just coated them with some Flex Seal. Flex Seal is like a rubberized paint. And there you have it, a heavy duty steel mailbox that doesn't require any welding. If you wanna see what we're working on next, be sure to follow us on Instagram, check out some of our other videos, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thanks, bye.